Thanks, Alana. Um, so as Ellie and Alana have said, the ethics of collecting during a pandemic was really a reoccurring concern for the contemporary collecting group. And I'm going to speak about how these conversations helped inform ways of working at the Science Museum. Um, many of us spent those early months grappling with the situation as it unfolded, sharing thoughts, concerns, small triumphs and failures with each other on that Slack channel. The usual aspects of contemporary collecting that so many of us love were really thrown into question and imbued with new and pro profound complexity. In the medical curatorial team at the Science Museum, we were relatively familiar with the inherently personal and often sensitive nature of medical collecting, with objects often closely connected to challenging experiences. But I don't think anything could have quite prepared us for what was to come. The sheer complexity of the situation and the ethical conversations being had across the sector led the Science Museum group to form an advisory panel very early on in the project. And this is fairly unusual um, thing to do for a collecting project, or at least it is at the Science Museum. One of the main responsibilities of this panel was to give a steer to the ethical guidelines that needed to be central to our approach. Like many museums, um, we already had an ethics poli policy and collecting policy, but this unique situation really called for something more. So through wide consultation with organisations, which included the Welcome Collection, and building on existing guidelines and toolkits around contemporary collecting, the team created our guidelines. So whilst conversations were being had at high level and in this advisory panel, we also kept track of conversations around ethical collecting in the Slack channel and referred to useful resources being shared by the group. Next slide, please, Alna. So to quickly note a few existing guidelines and toolkits which were helpful in considering our approach. The first is the Oral History Societies um, who published guidelines about collecting oral histories relating to COVID-19. So their guidelines warned that when interviewing healthcare or front frontline workers, there is a danger that single session interviews that require staff to talk about their thoughts or feelings may increase the likelihood of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This resource, along with noting that other organisations were already conducting oral histories, something that we could see through select channel conversations, helped inform our decision not to conduct oral histories specific to COVID. The wider emotional cost of attempting to collect material associated with COVID-19 really led the museum community to debate and in some cases criticise the rapid response collecting approach. And this is an area heavily discussed by the Contemporary Collecting Network and Slack channel and um, led to this idea, which is the title of our talk, of kind of slowing down. The second thing to note is the Museum Association's Code of Ethics, something that um, many of us will be familiar with as a framework to support museums to resolve ethical issues. And the MA also published their own statement about ethical collecting during the pandemic. And finally, um, the Contemporary Collecting Toolkit by London Transport Museum, which Ellie um, kind of outlined earlier, and in particular, the theme on trauma and distress, is particularly informative. Next slide, please, Alna. So I'll share a, li a link to these in the chat afterwards, but I wanted to quickly talk through the main points in the Science Museum's ethical guidelines for collecting COVID. The first is uh, the Science Museum group will make no communication or ask for any action that will take medical practitioners, NHS workers, or those involved in, a res in response efforts away from their important duties. Um, knowing when to approach people was a constant discussion in the first few months on the kind of network channels and judging when or if we should contact people with a view to collecting has really proven to be one of the most delicate tasks to manage. So throughout the near year and a half that we've now been collecting, the team have really had to fluctuate in our approach, tentatively assessing the situation and attempting to track its severity, which given the unpredictability of everything that's happened in the past, um, it has been incredibly challenging. So the next is, we will take no action that might involve an increase in human contact at times of recommended isolation or lockdown. We will be respectful and sensitive to the fact that lives and livelihoods are at risk. 
we will ensure that our collecting is considered and properly documented to ensure maximum usefulness and for future re research and display. And this is something the team are now grappling with. It's bringing in and processing the material collected or proposed to the collection over the past 15 months, which is a huge feat. And this also comes with continued ethical complexities of assessing personal circumstances and comfort levels as we emerge from lockdown. Next, we have, um, we will ensure our collecting is not duplicating the work of others. And this is something Eleanor raised. This is where the Slack channel was incredibly useful. Knowing which organizations were attempting to collect what, gave, um, were attempting to collect what, gave us a real sense of the collective effort. And certainly for me, a reassurance that we didn't have to attempt to collect everything. I'm sure there'll be plenty of masks and hand, sanitize, hand sanitizers to be found in collections going forward. But for those broader themes of oral histories or diaries and note, notebooks, this really provided us with clarity on what not to, as well as what to pursue. Imogen, one more minute. Thank you. We will ensure that our own staff uh, are supported in collecting and displaying the material. So this is the final point, and perhaps one of the most important, but has been equally challenging to assess. So these ethical guidelines have been incredibly useful and have formed a backbone to the Science Museum Group's collecting projects, shaping the way we interact uh, with potential donors and each other. And now after nearly a year and a half, the challenges of collecting during the pandemic continue to be significant and somewhat unpredictable. So final slide, please. So going back to the network more broadly, this slide shows um, some information about how to join the conversation and access re recordings of previous network meetings. And we can share these links in the chat afterwards. Um, but throughout all of this, the Contemporary Collecting Group Network and the Slack channel have provided space for colleagues to share ideas, resources and learn from one another and this is regardless of position whether it be senior level at a huge organization or a sole museum worker in a small independent museum and ultimately the network has provided a space for colleagues to care for and support each other through arguably the most complex mass collecting activity in the history of museums and archives thank you and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have later on